If you're exploring Mammoth Lakes in the summer and only have time to do one hike, it might be to see Devil's Postpal and Rainbow Falls. Here, you'll hike along the middle fork of the San Joaquin River and see two of the best attractions in all of Mammoth Lakes. Active Tours is a new channel, and if you like this video, please subscribe to become a founding member of my channel. To reach the trailhead, you need to jump on the 395 and drive through the town of Mammoth Lakes. If you're listening to this in the future and public transportation is a thing again, you'll catch a shuttle from the Mammoth Mountain Adventure Center and take it down to the trailhead. But during COVID times and during the off season, they let you drive right to the trailhead. You drive right past Minaret Vista, a stop that you should definitely hit closer to sunrise or sunset. Then, almost immediately, you enter Devil's Postpal National Monument. You head down the windy Postpal Road until you reach the valley floor, and then from here, you're looking for the Ranger Station, or Stop 6 on the shuttle map. This is where the trailhead starts, and then there are two parking lots here. The first one is for backpackers, and the second parking lot is larger for day hikers. Remember that this is bear country, and there are a few bear bins close to the ranger station and on the other side of the parking lot. If you have kids and they're interested in becoming a junior ranger, head over to the ranger station for a booklet and you can earn some cool swag. These rangers were super helpful and answered a lot of questions for me. Jumping on the trail, you can head south along the San Joaquin River to Devil's Postpal. This 0.4 mile stretch of trail is extremely well trafficked and very flat. It very quickly leads you to this amazing natural wonder. The honeycomb pattern of Devil's Postpal is one of nature's strongest designs. And it's just amazing to see up close in person. How does this even happen, right? I mean, it's like mind blowing. Let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. Molten lava and glacial ice shape these unusual rock columns. Basaltic lava more than 400 feet deep filled this narrow valley nearly 100,000 years ago. As this lava cooled, cracks formed on the surface to release built up tension. These cracks formed into hexagons, which is one of nature's most efficient and stable shapes. During the last ice age, about 20,000 years ago, a glacier carved shined and exposed this cliff for us all to enjoy. I highly recommend the hike to the top of this natural wonder, but it is the most elevation gain on the entire hike. It is pretty short though, so don't worry. From here you can really see the glacier shined hexagon tiles on the top of Devil's Post Pile. Hiking down from here, you can also see how massive the lava pool was. As you head down the trail to Rainbow Falls, you can see a bunch of areas with more post piles. This is something that's truly unique and something that I've never seen before. If you decide not to go to the top of Devil's Post Pile, you still have a decent hill to climb just past the main post piles. From here, the trail to Rainbow Falls is another two miles along the middle fork of the San Joaquin River. The water of the San Joaquin River travels from here all the way down to San Francisco Bay. So be sure to practice leave no trace principles by packing out your trash and leaving rocks and other things that you find where they are. You cross a few streams along the way with some well-maintained crossings and you also cross the John Muir Trail and the Pacific Crash Trail along the way. One of my friends hiked the John Muir Trail just last year so big props to her. Go Carrie. Uh, it's definitely on my bucket list to do a John Muir Trail big through hike like that. Um, I hope to do it one day soon. A little bit further down the trail, you enter a burn area from 1992. It's called the Rainbow Fire. This video was filmed in 2020, so you can really get a feel for how long it takes for forests like this to grow back. That fire started from a lightning strike and really devastated the area, but it is starting to grow back. Almost 30 years and there's barely any trees down here on the forest floor. From here, you can also get a great look at Mammoth Mountain. And if you haven't seen my list of the top things to do in Mammoth, check out that video in the link above or in the description. Now, as you approach Rainbow Falls, you can hear it way before you can see it. And as you crest a small hill, you can see the top of the falls. Do not swim in the stream up above the falls. Every year I hear about people swimming above falls and it does not end well. Don't be one of those people. From here, there's three great viewing spots that try to catch a glimpse of the rainbows that give the falls its name. The best time to see the rainbow is when the sun is at its highest on sunny summer days. For me, it wasn't until about 2 p.m. that I could finally see the rainbow. 
I saw it after returning from a bonus waterfall that I'm going to chat about in a few moments. Also, horsebacking options and an alternative round trip hike. Rainbow Falls is the highest waterfall of the middle fork of the San Joaquin River, plunging 102 feet. You can head down those 102 feet using stairs to get to a fantastic soaking area. Just be sure to stay away from the waterfall itself. Can you imagine one of these huge pieces of wood going over the falls? Exploring the surrounding rocks and the wildflowers was fun as well. We sat and had some snacks here before heading off to the next falls, just another 0.5 miles down the trail, and totally worth a visit. The Lower Falls is just a quick stroll down the trail. You get a really good perspective on the 1992 fires through this section of the hike as well, with a few small trees starting to come back and grow. It's also another great place for a view of Mammoth Mountain. Hit that thumbs up if Mammoth Mountain is your favorite place to go skiing and snowboarding. It sure is for me. You can get up close and personal with the top of the waterfalls just before heading down to see the entire falls. The view from the top of the waterfall is spectacular and really gives you perspective on the Sierras. Coming down and looking at the waterfall from the water level is really cool too. The falls are much less crowded and much better suited to hang out for a picnic or going for a swim. On the way back, we took the turn off for Red's Meadow. Here you can make the hike a bit of a loop. If you're taking the shuttle, you can also grab the shuttle here and head back to wherever you want to go next. But what we ended up doing was taking a trail off the beaten path, a little bit away from the crowds, um, and hiking up parallel to the one that you just came down. If you head up to Red's Meadow, you can also get a great horseback riding tour. You can you can jump on a horse and ride all the way to Rainbow Falls, which seems pretty cool. Even more exciting for me would be a horse packing camping trip. They bring all your gear, they take you out into the middle of nowhere, and you don't have to do anything. All you do is ride your horse all the way to the lake or mountain, wherever you're going. Comment below if you've ever done a horse packing trip. Let me know how you liked it. I really want to try one of these. This part of the trail is much more quiet than the main trail to the falls. For me, it makes it worth the extra few tenths of a mile to get on this part of the trail. You also cross the John Muir Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail and meet back up with the main trail. Well, I hope you guys like this trail review. Subscribe to this channel to become a founding member of Active Tours. In the next few videos, I have a backpacking trip to Cottonwood Lakes with my dog Iris. I'm also going to Lake Tahoe for my birthday. Lake Tahoe is one of my happy places for sure. I think we're going to be doing some hiking, some boating, some stand-up paddle boarding, some rafting. My friends are finally going to get me to go mountain biking, so I'm excited about that. It should be pretty epic. After that, I just planned a road trip to Zion, Bryce, Arches, Moab. This is going to be so fun. This is going to be a really amazing trip. I'm going to have tons of footage to put together for you guys to enjoy. Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithms to, you know, suggest my channel. And comment below. Let me know that you liked this video so that I can keep doing these videos for you. It helps keep me motivated to do all this work. Again, thanks. I'm Josh from Active Tours. See you on the next adventure.